My fellow Canadians, I'm the bearer of very bad news. Our Prime Minister appears to be hell-bent on signing the CETA agreement on October 27th. If he does, and it is ratified by Parliament, it will be game over for Canada. We will be doomed to another 10 years of austerity economics, or worse. CETA's official name is Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement, but it should be called Cleverly Executed Takeover Agreement, because that is what it is. It is the final step in the decades-long process in which the richest, most ruthless families in the world have been striving to gain control over the world economy. They have succeeded to the extent that 62 families now own 50% of all the wealth in the whole world. CETA is the clincher. The first step for Canada was so quiet and surreptitious, we didn't even realize a war had begun. In 1974, the Bank of Canada unilaterally changed the system that had been in effect since 1939, and which had provided the Government of Canada with very large amounts of money at near zero cost. This policy got us out of the Great Depression, helped finance World War II, the huge post-war infrastructure projects, and a social security system that was the envy of many countries. In 1974, the Bank of Canada abandoned its shareholders and started taking its orders from the Bank of International Settlements in Basel, Switzerland, a bank controlled by the world's most powerful banking families. We had to start borrowing in the market and pay high interest rates. That policy, from fiscal year 1974 to fiscal year 2010-11, cost Canadian taxpayers $1.1 trillion in unnecessary interest, and we are still paying. The second invisible trap was the Canada-US trade agreement. We agreed to a formula called the Disputes Settlement Mechanism, under which if one of our provinces or the federal government passed a law that was good for us, but which impinged on the profits or potential profits of a U.S. company, Ottawa could be sued for damages. For example, the province of Quebec put a moratorium on fracking for oil. Lone Pine Resources, Inc. sued Ottawa for $250 million. There have been multiple suits under NAFTA, which was the next round. That, and our adherence to the World Trade Organization, resulted in the loss of nearly all of our great transnational corporations. We lost the protection of the Auto Pact. One of our best industries until production began to move to the US and Mexico the middle class continues to be decimated. A combination of the bank monopoly on creating money and trade agreements that made it difficult to compete with bigger countries has resulted in more than one million Canadian young people being unemployed for 10 years and with no relief in sight. The only solution to Canada's perpetual recession is a massive infusion of government-created debt-free money 
to dilute the ocean of debt in which we are drowning. A group of very concerned citizens designed a plan to do just that. The Canadian Parliament would direct the Bank of Canada to create $150 billion a year for seven years to be spent 50% by the federal government and 50% by the provinces and territories on a per capita basis. It would be necessary to uh, reinstate cash reserves and increase them from zero to 34% over the seven year period. This would ensure that the government created money would not be inflationary. Bank leverage would be reduced from 20 to one to two to one, which means that the rich banking families would no longer be able to buy up assets for five cents on the dollar, they would have to pay 50 cents. The details of this can be found at www.canadianbankreformers.ca and is called a social contract between the government and people of Canada. What does it mean for you as an individual? It would mean an investment of about $29,000 for every man, woman, and child in Canada. Enough money to play catch up in medical care, education, the arts, municipal infrastructure, and in meeting the needs of our long neglected Aboriginal brothers and sisters. After seven years, Money creation could be split, 34% for governments and 66% for the private banks. That would make it possible for governments at all levels, federal, provincial, and municipal, to balance their budgets at reasonable tax rates and for the banks to provide legitimate services. This plan was presented to government months ago and uh, should have been implemented before the summer recess so that it could have created 50,000 additional jobs a month. But the government is stubbornly resisting on advice of so-called experts. They have bought into the idea that an unelected world government of bankers and elite corporate executives would be better than self-rule. Don't believe it. They have been running the US and much of the world for the last 40 years. And that, my friends, is the reason it is in such a mess today. Which brings us back to the present crisis. Strategists for the bankers and the rich elite are well aware that Canada could lead the way to a new era of prosperity because we own our central bank and we own it outright. So they have spent years preparing two trade agreements, CETA and the Trans-Pacific Partnership either one of which would unilaterally change the Canadian Constitution and end the Canadian Parliament's exclusive power over money and banking under Section 91 and also provincial rights under Section 92 of the Constitution Act, 1867. CETA would make it impossible for both federal and provincial governments to exercise their rights in financial matters. Put bluntly, our goose would be cooked and we would be doomed to mediocrity forever. We must try to persuade the Prime Minister to turn his back on the small minority who are creating a two-class world of unseemly rich 
and abjectly poor. Sita is the clincher, the final battle for complete control by a few, which will result in the mainstream being powerless. So, send the Prime Minister a letter, not an email, a real letter, thousands of them, casting your vote, yes, to the social contract, a social contract that would rejuvenate the Canadian economy and restore power to the people, and a resounding no to CETA and its big brother, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And send this message on to everyone you know and ask them to do the same. Every person we neglect to involve is a vote for the rich elite. And students, that means you too. You have the most to gain because your whole lives are ahead of you. And this battle between the good or mediocre future is yours to win or lose. You may never get a second chance. Address your letter to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, House of Commons, Ottawa, Ontario, K1A0A6. Let me repeat that one more time. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, House of Commons, Ottawa, Ontario, K1A0A6. No postage is required. Thank you.